everybody, I'm back to do my July wrap up for you all. Today's wrap up is gonna be a combination of the book Tubathon and basically what I read in general. I actually read a lot more than I thought I did. It just a lot of it was manga as usual. So I apologize in advance for the lighting. Um, lately I have been working mornings and I come back home and all I have, I don't have any like fancy lighting equipment so I've been trying to use natural sunlight and it's about seven o'clock right now so there's there's not much sunlight left. I'm trying to actually beat the sunset so that I can still have light for this video. Anyways, so I read mostly physical books and then I have three things that I've been reading online and I will go over those as well. So the first few books I have here are all manga and the first manga I read was Page of Eden by Yoshinobu Yamada. This is volume one. If you've watched my most recent haul, this was in it. This is basically a survival story about a class that is on a plane that crashes on a mysterious island and it's their survival story on the island and it's super awesome. I'm really really enjoying this. I only own the first two volumes but I already plan on ordering a lot more. I gave this five out of five stars. This one I haven't talked about too much since my, I hauled it and that is volume two of Sankarea by Mitsuru Hattori and I'm really really enjoying this. I think I've mentioned this before though that it is kind of geared towards men so there's a lot of like male fan service in this and for the most part that annoys me but there are very few books like that that I can actually overlook because I really enjoyed the storyline and this is one of them comedy romance with zombies and for this one I gave this four out of five stars on my Goodreads page but I actually think I might make it three out of five stars there was something in this volume particularly that kind of annoyed me and I don't think it's going to continue into the next volumes but for this one it was yeah it kind of disappointed me so I'm giving this one a slightly lower rating when I get the chance to change it on my Goodreads, but yes. The next manga I read was 20th Century Boys by Naoki Urusawa. This is volume one. This was really confusing at first and that's why I have given it three out of five stars. Throughout most of the book I was like where is this story going? I don't understand. And then the ending was really 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 awesome. Now that I know where the story is progressing towards, I think I'm definitely going to be liking this as we go further along and I'm sure the farther books will get higher ratings but for now I'm going to stick to three out of five just because it was really confusing in the beginning. So this is basically about cults and there's a murder mystery involved and a lot of political intrigue. My first novel for the month was Fallen Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes. This is the first book in the Fallen Kingdoms series and I really really enjoyed it. The beginning was a little bit uh, predictable for me so I didn't think I would enjoy it at first but as the story got further and further I really really enjoyed it and I cannot wait to pick up the second one. I would have started it had it not been for book Tubathon. So I plan on getting to Rebel Spring very very soon. I gave this book four out of five stars. If you want to get into high fantasy and you like the idea of wanting to read uh, the Song of Ice and Fire series by George R. R. Martin, this is kind of more like a YA version of it. You have about like three or four POVs in here and there's a lot of political intrigue going on in this book and it's very much set kind of like a young adult Game of Thrones. So if you are too intimidated to read Game of Thrones, start with this and see if you enjoy it and then you can read that one if it's something that you really enjoyed. I went back to reading manga after that and the next one I picked up was Monster Book 1 by Naoki Urusawa. This is a bind up of volumes 1 and 2 in it. I really really enjoy these bind ups. At first I wasn't too you know thrilled with the cover but I'm actually getting attached to it slowly as I look at it more and I love this manga. Out of all of Naoki Urusawa's stuff that I've read this is probably my favorite right now. I don't know Pluto's pretty close but this is basically about a doctor who saves the life of a child that grows up to be a serial killer and the doctor decides to make it his mission to kind of go after him and try to kill him because he feels responsible for saving his life in the beginning. Doesn't that just sound like an awesome book? I gave this five out of five stars so go read it. I cannot wait to do a review on this. Seriously I have many many things to say about this and 
it will be sort of a long review, <laughs> that's all I have to say. But yes, uh, five out of five stars. As well as reading physical books, I've been reading a lot of manga online. I have one particular website that I always use and I will leave a link to it. It's called mangahere.com and they have thousands and thousands of scanlations on there if you want to read a manga without purchasing it. I do highly recommend as using it kind of as a way to see if you like a manga and then go and still purchase it. Obviously, we want to support our authors, so definitely use that. One of the plus sides to this is there are thousands of manga that have not yet been published in English, so I use it mostly for reading those, um, and then I will read some that are that are published, and then but that one will just be to see if I want to purchase them. That's that explanation. I have my little notes. There's three in particular that I've been reading this month, and I totally blame Crunchyroll. If you love anime and want to watch a lot of anime, get Crunchyroll. It's basically just like, it's like Hulu Plus and Netflix, but for just anime, it's like, I think I pay $8 a month for it. And there's a shit ton of anime on it. What I like about it is that it actually airs newer stuff. Like as soon as it airs in Japan, Crunchyroll gets it like a few days later. So there's a lot of new stuff that I've been reading that kind of corresponds to the summer anime season. And so the first one I've been reading is Love Stage. by Eiki Eiki and Zhao Taishi. This is a BL or boys love story about a guy named Izumi who is part of a famous acting family. They are very famous in commercials and TV shows and his older brother is a famous pop singer. The only difference is Izumi is not like that at all. He wants to be a mangaka or a manga artist. The only problem is that he really sucks at it. But because his family is into acting when he was little, he played the part of a girl in a commercial when he was little with a little boy. And 10 years later, the little boy grows up to be a famous actor and he kind of developed a crush on Izumi when they were little and has held on to this crush for 10 years. 10 years later now, they meet and he finds out that Izumi is a boy. And at first it's an issue. Uh, they kind of f slowly figure out that they don't care that they're the same gender and they fall in love. And it's super cute. It's definitely for an older audience. Not so much the anime, but then again, there's only like three or four episodes out. So I don't know if it's going to get very graphic, but the manga is definitely more graphic than the anime. And it's just really cute uh, comedy romance. There's 23 chapters out on the website that I have listed down below. And it's super cute. And if you like that kind of story, Please go read it. I highly, highly recommend it. I gave it four out of five stars. The next manga I've been reading online is Ao Haru Ride or Blue Springs Ride by Sakisaka Io. There are 42 chapters online right now and Again, also, this is a newer anime that just aired for the summer season. There are about three or four episodes out right now, and I really enjoy it. This is another just slice-of-life comedy romance. There are just some of these romances... <sighs> You know me and contemporary romances. I don't like them, but for some reason when it comes to anime and manga, I love them. And this is one of them. This is about a girl named Yoshioka Futaba who develops a crush on a boy in middle school. And right when they kind of figure out that they have feelings for one another, he moves away and she moves on to high school. And she was kind of the, the shy girl in middle school. And when she got to high school, she decided that when she was the shy girl, it kind of shunned all the girls away as far as like making friends. And uh, she didn't want that to happen. So she decided to kind of reset her personality when she got into high school and completely fake how she acts around people. And turns out that this boy comes and comes back and starts going to their high school and she realizes she still has feelings for him and he kind of helps her to realize that she doesn't need to pretend to be somebody, she can be herself. And it's also about friendship as well as love, so it's about her finding friends that actually like her for her real personality and not this fake one. Yeah, that was a really long explanation, but all right. I gave this one four out of five stars as well. It is really cute. And then the last one that I've been reading online is not an anime right now, but I really, really wish it could be because I'm kind of obsessing over it right now. And that is Hirunaka no Ryusei or 
or I think it's translated as Daytime Shooting Star, uh, I'm not too sure, by Yamamori Mika. Well, there were 70 chapters up until today, and when I went to look at, you know, the information to tell you guys, there was another chapter, and I'm gonna go read it as soon as I'm done recording this because I'm obsessed. So this story is about a girl named Suzume Yosano, and she's like a country bumpkin, and she ends up moving to Tokyo to live with her uncle, and she, it's about her starting her high school life there in a new environment. And, you know, the city is very, very different from the country. So she's kind of trying to get used to it. It's a forbidden love story. It's basically about her falling in love with her homeroom teacher who she's 16. And I think at the point at the beginning of the story, he's like 23 or something like that. I really, really enjoy it. And it's super cute, and if you like forbidden stories, I think you guys will like this too. Again, there will be links to all of these that I'm talking about down below because I'm sure my explanations aren't very clear because yeah, I'm just like fangirling about them right now, so I'm sure like I'm being really spazzy. So those are the three I'm reading online. Back to the physical books. I then read the first and second bind ups in the Death Note series by Tsugumi Oba and art by Takeshi Obata. The first bind up I read as part of the book Tubathon. It was the very first thing I finished and it also completed the read a book with pictures in it. And then I watched the first movie adaptation to this series. So that completed the read a book to movie adaptation as well. Those were the only two things that I managed to complete for the book Tubathon. During the book Tubathon though, I did happen to start the start a series, but I didn't finish the series. And that series was the Hex Hall trilogy. So we have Hex Hall, Demon Glass, and Spellbound, which I absolutely loved. Gave this whole series four and a half out of five stars. Super, super funny. If you like like a sarcastic humor, it, then this is a trilogy for you. By looking at the covers, I wasn't sure I was gonna like it because it looked a little bit childish. And it is kind of is, but I liked it. I thought it was funny and they're super quick to read. I read this one super fast and this one um, work kind of got in the way but I read it pretty quickly too. And then this one I didn't read till after Booktubeathon but I did finish it in like a day and a half. So we read that. The last and final thing that I read in July was Lock and Key Volume 2 Head Games by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez and I gave this five out of five stars. I could not put this thing down. I think this volume was even better than the first one and I'm really really loving where this story is going and the art style is just amazing and uh, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to read the rest of it. So that is what I read in the month of July. Now it is only the 28th, but I don't think I will be finishing anything anytime soon because the book that I'm in the middle of reading is Akadem's Fury by Jim Butcher, which is book two in the Codex Alara series. And I'm only about halfway through. I'm on chapter 27 right now. I'm working the next few days. I don't think this is going to get done before the end of July. So I thought that I would just record this now. And I don't even know when I'm going to be editing and putting this up. So I might even be putting this up towards the end of the month. But at the moment, I still have a few more days. Maybe by some miracle I'll get this done. But we're not going to... We're not gonna put our hopes up for that. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!